Last but certainly not least, uh, I'd like to introduce Nathan Lear up to the microphone. Nathan's also a certified financial planner, senior advisor uh, with the company. And he's going to talk to you about the importance of continually rebalancing portfolios back to your original uh, asset allocation, particularly during turbulent times, uh, and just the importance of this and the impact that it can have on long-term returns for portfolios. Welcome, Nathan. As Andrew mentioned, tonight I'll be talking about portfolio rebalancing. Before I get into the ins and outs of portfolio rebalancing, I want to visit the important investment concept of asset allocation. We'll then go back to portfolio rebalancing in a little bit more detail, and we'll finish off with a couple of examples of how rebalancing actually works. So what is asset allocation? What does it mean? We often hear this word, word thrown around um, in the financial word, world, but what does it actually mean? Well, put simply, it means the allocation or the investment of different funds into different asset classes. So when talking about asset classes, Chris introduced the main ones before. Just to recap on those, the main ones that we deal with in our day-to-day -day life are Australian shares, fixed interest, property, international shares, and cash. So each of these different asset classes have different characteristics uh, in regard to their level of expected return and the risk, and, and the level of risk associated with it. So as an example, when looking at Australian shares, they'll generally provide the highest amount of return, but at, at the highest level of risk. On the other hand, cash is generally known to provide the lowest return at the lowest amount of risk. So a well-diversified investment portfolio allocates these funds into the different asset classes, but why do we do this? What benefit does this, does this help us with? Or help our portfolio, I should say. So the main benefits to our portfolio is it creates diversification. Given that different asset classes have different levels of risk, that reduces the total level of risk of the portfolio. Secondly, it minimises the volatility and the fluctuation of the returns. This is due to the fact that different asset classes are not always perfectly correlated. So while one may be rising in value, at the same time another one may actually be falling in value. So rather than us try to pick the winning sector, which is almost impossible to do, we really try and spread the risk over these different asset classes, which will really help us weather the ups and downs of, of the natural investment cycle that, that we experience. So I'm not trying to say that we'll eliminate losses altogether, but really we'll minimise losses by, by undertaking this process. Now in terms of our discipline strategy, many investors or, or clients are, are reluctant to part with an investment that's doing well or even reduce their exposure to this investment. And this is human nature. If it's performed well in the past, we'll, we'll expect, that, expect that it's going to continue to perform well into the future. So by main, maintaining an asset allocation, it forces us to stick to this strategy and, and stay at our predetermined sector weights that we set up when we initially um, set up that portfolio. And just lastly, an asset allocation can drive the long-term returns of the portfolio and achieve what you really wanted to achieve, which, which leads us to the next uh, area which we're going to talk about, which is how we go about determining the asset allocation. So at Hewson Private Wealth, we feel that there are two main drivers to help us set up the asset allocation. These being the client's individual goals and objectives and their attitude towards risk. So the proport now when looking at individual goals and objectives, the proportion of each asset class which will be allocated to you really depends on your specific goals and objectives. So, so put simply, it's really designed to achieve what you needed to achieve. So for example, a, a couple approaching retirement, they may have a higher focus on, on income they need an income in their retirement to, to meet you know, their, their spending needs. So they might have a higher focus on the asset classes of cash and fixed interest to provide them with this income return. On the other hand, a younger couple may be trying to accumulate wealth. They have a longer investment time horizon and many years to ride out the volatility of, of growth investments such as shares and property. So more of their money will be in, in those, asset class, those asset classes like shares and properties. 
shares and property, I should say. Um, and attitude towards risk, sorry, is the second point which I wanted to just cover off, cover off on there. Risk really means different things to different people. So some people are very comfortable with risk and, and the volatility or fluctuation up and down of their returns, while others are ultra conservative and really don't like risk. So the key, our key as your advisors is to really find that right balance, which is that, that last point I've got there between meeting these goals and objectives and, and setting the portfolio so it's got the right amount of risk that, that you as the client can handle. A couple of other considerations that I, I just want to quickly talk about. At Hewison's, we do, try, we do try to meet your goals and objectives by taking the least amount of risk possible. We'd rather be able to pr protect the downside of a portfolio rather than see this same portfolio be able to shoot the lights out in, in a good market and in a bad market hit rock bottom. Further, we do not believe in what you might have heard called um, risk profiling tools. Many others in the industry use this and what a risk profiling tool means, it's basically a computer program spits out an al asset allocation based on a series of questions that you answer. So we'd rather get a feel for, for our clients' uh, attitude towards risk in our meetings and discussions and then set up the portfolio accordingly. And finally, we don't have one standard solution for setting up an asset allocation. We have hundreds of different of clients and, and many, many different asset allocations. It really comes down to, to their objectives and setting, setting up that asset allocation for what they need it to achieve. So now that we've, we've kind of covered what an asset allocation is and how, uh, and how we go about setting it up, we're going to direct our attention to the ongoing management of that, portfolio, uh, that asset allocation, which is referred to as um, portfolio rebalancing. So what is portfolio re rebalancing? What does it mean? Well, in simple terms, it's the process of buying and selling investments to bring your portfolio back to its, to, to bring your portfolio back to its original asset class that you set up at the beginning. So as one asset, credit, one asset category is growing in value, another one may be falling in value. And, and that'll result in the portfolio being out of balance. So like the scales in this picture suggest, it's really about finding the right balance as things change over time. So why do we undertake a portfolio rebalancing strategy? Well, the two main reasons are to really ensure your objectives remain on track over time, and at the same time, managing that risk as things change.